How can we use artificial intelligence and other new technologies to prevent disasters? Stay with me, Elan Kelman, to find out in the final episode of The Science of Disasters. And don't forget, you can still subscribe if you want to watch the back episodes in this series. Like all technologies, digital approaches have applications for dealing with disasters, displaying advantages and disadvantages. The balance is always ensuring that the technologies match the interests, scope, and capabilities of those using the technologies and being served by them. As an example, around the Pacific, PeaceSat, based in Honolulu, has conducted remote education and training for disasters and development for over 30 years. The Pacific countries span such vast distances and so many diverse island communities that in-person approaches would be challenging, expensive, and unreliable. The PSAT program attributes its success to consistency, being long-term, and taking feedback from users, building up trust, and establishing a positive reputation for distance learning and exchange. Updating technology is important, meaning having the funds available while not exceeding the technological capabilities of people using the services. Consistent training is particularly useful for emphasizing pre-disaster actions, such as prevention, mitigation, preparedness, readiness, and risk reduction, helping to avoid the need for response and recovery. Nonetheless, disaster response also uses digital technologies, such as crowdsourcing following the Haiti earthquake on 12th January 2010, an open source, crisis mapping software was applied to collect masses of real-time information on immediate needs through digital media, including social media. An international group of self-organized volunteers updated the information and made it publicly available online. Some relief organizations were soon relying on it. With concerns raised that affected people without links to mobile phones or the internet, would not have their needs fully identified or met. Quality control was queried. Handheld digital devices combined with high internet connectivity give information power to the people. How trustworthy is the people's information, especially when fake news, malicious bots, and viral misinformation are so prevalent? It is exciting to have so many volunteers helping to collect and sort through the material and data but triangulating, corroborating, and filtering it in a rapid, consistent manner is important. Analyses for Haiti suggested that it was unclear how much using external volunteers produced information, which was actually new or different from what humanitarian organizations usually obtain, with the added burden of having to enact quality control. Here, artificial intelligence and neural networks can assist, but any algorithm can have flaws, or it might not be contextualized properly. We further need to consider how to harness this level of international volunteer energy for preventing disasters. Quality control and self-organized voluntary services have other limitations, one of the most prominent being power relationships. Power relationships, including how technologies are applied, are present in all disaster-related work. As soon as someone decides that using digital technologies requires quality control, then someone has the authority or power to censor, including when developing automatic algorithms. Who makes these decisions? When and how? One major power issue, as alluded to already, is access to the technology, with electricity, devices, and the internet all having costs. Any digital technology must serve people with disabilities, and across languages and dialects, while being robust enough to be viable irrespective of future changes to society and technology. Many who can afford a mobile phone and internet access now would not be able to afford upgrading each one every few years. Overall, digital technologies bring similar conclusions as using other technologies for dealing with disasters. These technologies must be part of the repertoire and must be applied but should not be allowed to take over. They should be used when, where, and how they are needed, rather than being implemented simply because they exist. Technologies represent options which should be available for complementing, enhancing, supporting, and combining with, but never replacing, other approaches. It's not too late to subscribe and watch all the episodes in this series. 
the science of disasters. And before I go, remember, it's humans, not nature, that create disasters. Bye for now.